A common approach to building a data pipeline is to follow what's known as the medallion architecture. At a high level, this gives you three clear layers for which to move your data along in the pipeline. And while that might seem pretty straightforward when I just explain it like that, a lot of teams I speak to actually struggle to implement this correctly. They're not sure if they're building things in the right layers, the naming gets thrown off, and it actually ends up becoming more complicated than it needs to be. So in this video, we'll talk a little bit more about what the medallion architecture is all about, where it fits in the grand scheme of what we do as data people, also some alternative approaches you could take to get the same result, but maybe in a slightly more simple way. So the first thing we'll do here is just level set on what is a medallion architecture, and then we'll talk a little bit more about where it fits from a strategic perspective. And I think the easiest way to look at this is to just look at a visual like this, and we'll see a lot of visuals in this video. So the first thing is you have data coming in into a raw layer, a landing zone, which is a term I like to use as well. So bronze is just that raw landing zone, no transformation, you're just dumping data in. If you think about, again, the data lake house, this is like the data lake portion. Again, this is how I understand it. Silver is then where you're adding some transformation logic. So filtered, clean, augmented, um, evolved schema, silver. And then gold is what I think of as a presentation layer. It's business level aggregates. It's something that's going to get plugged into your BI tools, different machine learning algorithms if you have them. This is, again, end user focused. So at a super high level, that's what the medallion architecture is all about. You'll see bronze, silver, gold. It's a way to organize things. And with that said, I want to take another step back a little bit, even to another higher level. Let's talk 100,000 feet. What are we doing here when it comes to data architecture and data engineering? And this is where I talk about the three pillars of data engineering. And I'm going to explain this because I hope that if you are a little bit confused by medallion architecture, it'll help reset what we're talking about here and make sure that we're all kind of focused on the same thing. So at a super high level, as a business, uh, as whatever it is we're working on, we're all data engineers for something. It's a business, it's a startup, it's your own project. There are some sort of data sources. Maybe it's internal databases, we have business applications, files, different APIs, all sorts of things. And we want to ultimately, I'm going to skip over, ultimately we want to be able to gain insights on them, deliver them to stakeholders, be able to do reports, understand the context around that. And in order to do that, we have what's called, well, at least I refer to this as the central hub. There's something happening in the middle where we're cleaning it up to prepare the source data and turn it into something that we can get insights on. That's probably overkill and over explaining, but I think it's important to remember what we're doing and where we're living as data people. We get so lost in the weeds here. So the medallion architecture is an approach for handling this central hub concept. It's not the only approach you can take, but I just think it's important to remember that's where we're living right now with this conversation. But the ultimate goal is to deliver insights, to turn sources into insights. With that in mind, let's now go down to the medallion architecture. Remember, we have sources, we have insights. Our goal is to bring this through. So layer one, we have sources. Remember, we had the bronze layer. So the first thing is load data into the bronze layer. This is just straight from the source, unformatted, no transformations, just living here in that landing zone. From there, we then transform that into the silver layer. And you have different layers here. Some might have just one schema, a bunch of tables. Maybe you have different hops. That's up to you, but that's the silver layer. And truthfully, I think the silver layer is where teams get confused. There's a little bit of an uncertainty around what should be silver versus gold. A lot of times you'll see tools like DBT here to do this transformation. And then gold layer three, which is then again, taking the silver layer and transforming it for presentation purposes for reporting. High level medallion architecture. So obviously this is a popular approach. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons, or at least I'll just share my opinions of it. From a pros perspective, it adds very clear separation of your layers of your data pipeline. The idea of having an isolated landing zone, I think is really helpful. It just keeps things organized. You can do a lot with security. You can handle your conventions and just kind of have a dedicated space to put everything, whether it's batch loaded or streaming, it all goes to one place. I'm going to hop over here to gold. I think gold is really helpful. The idea of having a presentation layer with your data marts or whatever you want to call them that tie into reporting and it's separate from the back end data transformation. You're kind of serving it up in a nice clean way. I think that's a really helpful idea. Now, in terms of the cons, one of the issues I see is uh, honestly a lot with the silver layer, which I think makes sense. It's where a lot of the action is happening. And maybe this isn't true for everybody. It's just what I've noticed in my career and just from talking to teams and seeing things. I notice a lot of teams aren't quite sure how this should be structured. So there could be multiple hops, a lot of different layers, and you're kind of all over the place, or you just have one big schema. I think another issue is teams aren't sure what should go silver versus gold, and it blends between the two. 
particularly when you then get down into the DBT project. Oh, that's a common tool that I see used. So how should that structure be created to make sure that the database is aligned here, but also the DBT project matches up? So again, maybe it's overly complicated the way I'm saying this. It's just something I've seen. And a simple example could be facts and dimensions. I have an opinion on that. I think that lives in the silver layer, but I've seen some teams build that in the gold layer. Of course, everyone's going to do things a little bit different. It's just a guiding concept. I'll also mention that I do think having a shared language is important. So having something called a bronze layer, a silver layer, gold layer, just using those terms is helpful for other people to collectively talk about the same thing. Unfortunately, I also noticed that, again, it just confuses people a little bit about how to name objects compared to just talk about them. Do they name them this way in their database? And maybe the answer is yes. These are just things that I've noticed come up. And that's why I sometimes don't follow this directly just because it's an unnecessary confusion, I think, sometimes. So with that said, I'll also share a little bit more about another approach you can take. It's very similar. And the idea is, again, to, to bring it home, we're getting the same result. It's just another way to turn sources into insights following similar concepts. So I refer to this as the three layer data model. And again, it's actually three layers here as well. So we're kind of talking about the same thing. But what I tend to follow is something that looks like this. And you'll notice it's very similar. And I'll explain what this concept is and where it varies a little bit. So here I have what you would typically before see as the bronze layer, but I'm calling it raw. To me, sometimes being overly clear is, it sounds boring, but it's more effective and it's easier to explain to people. So rather than calling this bronze, I'll usually just call it raw. And it's very clear of exactly what this is. You don't have to explain what that means. And so it's following the same concept, but the name's a little different. It's the raw landing zone, same idea. From there, there's similar hops. Again, we have those three layers. I'll typically keep this in one database. We don't have to get too hung up on that. But here, rather than using the terms bronze, silver, gold, I follow these three concepts. This is where I talk about three layers. We have staging, which are going to be one-to-one -one views on top of this. So you could consider this the beginning of the light transformation. There's no transformation here. This is one-to-one -one cleaned up views on top of those tables. I have other videos on this topic specifically if you wanna learn a little bit more about that. From there, it then goes into a warehouse schema. Warehouse very clearly is going to be facts and dimensions. There's really no confusion about what that is. And then there's the presentation layer and you have marts. And the marts are going to be what is going into BI tools to machine learning, AI, reverse ETL, whatever it is you wanna do. That's that end user spot there. And so just to be even more explicit, it is basically the same idea. The difference is I'm not using these terms up here because we're getting the same result without them. It's just a way of talking about it. And to me, sometimes when you just actually don't use those terms, it makes it a little bit easier to understand oddly enough. And so that's why I typically just avoid it. But a lot of times I'll work with teams that are either already following that approach or want to. Um, and so this is a way that you can kind of combine those concepts. But again, when you look at this, I think where things get a little bit confusing are database object naming, DBT project layout, you know, you're, you're kind of adding an extra level there that to me is just not really necessary. But again, not saying it's wrong, not saying it's a bad idea, it's personal preference. So again, and then down here, again, I have this it is the same concept, those three different layers. But to me, when I say three layer, I'm thinking more of these over here. And also, I just feel that sometimes these extra names up here add more confusion than are necessary to get to the end result. And if I go all the way back up here, all of this stuff we're talking about, nitpicking little things, at the end of the day, what's most important is that we're turning sources for a business into insights. How we get there, we can debate and talk about all these different approaches, whether you use the names, gold, silver, bronze or not is up for debate. Hopefully this video helped give you some ideas on ways to think about it. And at the end of the day, that was the goal of this video. I hope you found this helpful and you have some new ideas for how to think about this. And if you have any questions or other experiences on this, feel free to leave a comment. I think it'd be really helpful for other people to hear about this. I'm by no means the number one expert on medallion architecture. But with all that said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.